Hi, it's Craig on my R2 building channel. Here's some loose ends on this droid, my R2-D2 slash R5-D4. Um, the how crude is your droid? There were a lot of things that I took off this thing because I felt I had to redo it. There was a lot of stuff on there that was just embarrassingly inaccurate. And um, what did I do with some of the things that I took off of this droid? Well, I threw away a lot of it. Um, some of it I just got hacked up. Motors and stuff just got thrown in a parts bin of DC motors. And some of it I kind of preserved um, just because I couldn't bring myself to throw it away. So I'm going to show you that. So when I redid my R2-D2 slash R5-D4 several years ago, um, vents, hollow projector, details, and whatnot, I wound up throwing those in a shadow box. So here were the old, very inaccurate vents that I took out of there. Couldn't bring myself to throw them away, so they wound up in there. Uh, the octagon port that I redid, I just didn't like how those corners were not very crisp. So these were vents that I remade for the retrofit. Didn't quite come out the way I wanted them to, so I threw them in here. There is my hollow projector that was on there for many, many years. I didn't like how thick the emitter cone wall was because I kept the neck inside the bottle on that scope mouthwash cap and I didn't like the o-ring holding that lens in there so what I did was I took that hollow projector and I dressed it up to look more like the Vickers aircraft reading light uh, and put it in this box I made a silicone mold of the Dave Everett radar eye um, just to have something else to throw in this shadow box here. Uh, that's the, there's YouTube videos where you can take Dawn dishwashing soap and put it in uh, a, a dish and mix up 100% silicone, a lot of 100% silicone, and then you, uh, you stir it up and you kind of make like a 100% like a silicone molding putty that you can put around something and once it cures, uh, you can pull it out. There's YouTube videos on how to do that. So that's what I did there. Uh, oh, here, when I chopped out these huge panels here, so I could um, put the R2-D2 ones on or the R5-D4 ones on, I could go either way. What did I do with the big, thick, thick, thick wall panels that came out of here? Well, I threw it in the shadow box. Um, along with some Star Wars cards, some vintage, some newer. I did, I found that the details on the feet were so easy to do. I just slopped this together with some flat PVC I had laying around, made some foot details. I did do the silicone molds also of the uh, the knurled uh, battery cable ends. And uh, the funny thing about these uh, silicone molds that I made is you're asking, well, what material did you put, you know, put in there? I had a container of that Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty that I'd had for 25, 30 years. And I said, let me just get rid of this. So I was mixing up Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty and I was putting those silicone molds. So I made these little knurled uh, battery cable ends and the Ray RRI. Um, I made this one a little bit later. Pretty much the same thing. A panel, foot detail. Didn't have the knurled ends on there. Uh, when I started chopping up 18 inch PVC to make replacement utility arms, that was working so well I just made a couple extras and threw them in each one. A uh, little blueprint in there, another vintage Star Wars card and a newer one, and another radar eye made from the Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty. Um, 
<laughs> so that is what I did with some of the parts that I yoinked off of this droid when I did the retrofit. Uh, and in closing, if you are building an R2 from scratch and you make the mistake that I made, I said, look, I'm from a small town. I'm just going to make this project close enough. Why do I have to make this 100% accurate canon? Who's going to see it? It's just me. Well, you never know where this R2 building hobby is going to take you. This book, chronicling 30 years of Star Wars, hit the bookstores a while back, and uh, I snatched it up because, hey, I'm a Star Wars fan. This is an interesting read. It really uh, is a is a treasure trove of, uh, of of backstory on the films. And then I started flipping through the pages and take a look at what I found. Here is our group at Celebration. Uh, this was Celebration 3. And here's all of the R2 builders posing. There's me. There's so many wonderfully talented friends that I've made over the years. And look who's right there in the center with his hand on that droid. George Lucas. Uh, he was in our room inspecting our work. So that thought that I had where, well, close enough is good enough. I mean, who's going to see this? <laughs> George Lucas, that's who. Let's go a couple pages in. Um, here we are again. Celebration 2. This was in 2002. And these are the old school droid builders. Um, these are the these are the modest beginnings of the R2 Builders Club. And uh, and look who's way back there with this droid that was built close enough, immortalized in a book. Well, there you are. So if you're building a droid, you might want to spend a little bit more attention to detail. You don't have to be 100% canon, but uh, try to do as is, is, is a good a job as you can because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> small town boy immortalized in a book. So that's the follow up to this video. Uh, how crude is your droid? I wish I had done a better job in the early days, but I fixed a lot of it. And uh, moving forward to droid number two and droid number three, we we, we did a little little bit better and uh, that's my video so this is Craig on my R2 building channel give me a like catch you later